Last time we explored what partial derivatives are. To recap, consider any line parallel to the x-axis. Now, consider the set of all outputs of the function along that line. Basically, the partial derivative with respect to x gives the slope of the tangent line to this curve at some point along that line. The partial derivative with respect to y is basically the same, except that you consider a line parallel to the y-axis. But, what if we consider any kind of line L that isn't required to be parallel to x or y? axis. Now, let's define a curve C that is given by the set of all outputs of our multivariable function along that line. What we want to do is to find the slope of the tangent line to our curve C at some point P. Along that line L. First, we will consider a position vector V which has its tip at the point P. Now, we will consider another position vector W, which has its tip at some point S. And, that point S lies on the same line. We know that the slope at that point P is just a tiny change in the output of our function. Along the line L divided by a tiny change in the input of our function along the line L. So, when the point S is really close to the point P, the tiny change in the output is just F of S minus F of P. Now to figure out the change in input we would like to know how much does our input change. From P to S along the line L actually it's just the distance from P to S. If we examine the graph more carefully, we can deduce that the distance is just the magnitude of the displacement vector from P to S. Now, we are gonna simplify this expression. Notice that the tip of both V and W lie on the same line. So W can be written as V plus U times T. Because W and V are really close to each other, T is gonna be really close to zero. We can introduce a limit to indicate this. Now, notice that the vector W corresponds to the coordinates of the point S and the vector D corresponds to the coordinates of the point P. We already know that W equals V plus U times T. So we can rewrite the coordinates of the point S as shown above. By substituting the expressions of P and S into our slope formula we get this. Now the X component of our vector V is the same as the X component of our point P. The same logic can be applied to the Y component of P and V. So, finally we get this. This thing right here is called the directional derivative of f, and we denote them like this. What the directional derivative does is that it takes a point that lies on our line L and then it takes a unit vector that points in the direction of that line, and it spits out the slope of the tangent line to our curve C at that point. Wouldn't it be great if we had some kind of formula that could help us in calculating this monstrosity? The answer is a resounding yes. Because t is really small, it's a good idea to use linear approximation on this thing. Using the formula we can draw up a linear approximation of f near the point p. Now we can plug in p sub x plus u times t in the place of x and p sub y plus u times t in the place of y. We can plug this thing into the formula for the directional derivative and get the following. We can also write this as. So, we finally know what directional derivatives are, and we have a handy formula for computing it.